Winter is on its way to Pride Park Stadium. Traditionists will tell you it's the time of year that can make or break a promotion campaign. Before the fixtures come thick and fast, it's time to give back. We've come into the Harrison's Hub, met some some of the kids who've obviously school's been off, so they've been in, and we've given them a little tour around uh, Pride Park, and then yeah, we just uh, served them up some food. So um, yeah, there's been a lot of people here, but it's been a good turnout, and it, yeah, it's been good to give back to the community. Yeah, it's been good. Um, obviously, me and Cash uh, have obviously been asked to come down, so um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been enjoyable, and yeah, to see uh, obviously the kids, the smile on their faces, it's, it's it's really good. I know everything's a competition, whatever it is. Who's the better server between the two? It's of you? Not, the thing is, it's not a competition. He is absolutely shocking. If he was in an actual uh, cookie master chef, he'd be fired straight away. Gordon Ramsay would not have anything from him. Um, now nah, it's been good fun. He's he's silly as always, but. It hopefully it makes um, people laugh and hopefully they can enjoy the day. 100% me, Cash had a nightmare at the start. His, his portions were too big, then too small, so um, I would definitely back myself. The first football of November for the Rams is an elite fixture, and an FA Cup first round trip to Crew. Frustration for Derby in one cup competition, but they found things a lot more straightforward in the Bristol Street Motors Trophy so far. Wolves under 21s are the opponents in their final group game. The academy side are no match for one Derby Wilson. veteran. Cash is headed down, good save! But there is James Collins, a poacher's goal against Wolves. It's Kane Wilson, faced by the defender, makes room for the cross, good one, good chance! And James Collins second is a really good head at home. Made no mistake there. Or mistake is Weston. Here's Collins. Takes it on first time for a Derby County hat trick. James Collins has three. Derby have three. And surely now they are through to the next round. This is an important time of year for Derby's youngsters too. The FA Youth Cup is the most prestigious trophy for the junior age group. The young Rams are out to avoid an upset, away at local rivals, Mansfield. Trying to trick his way through, McAndrew shovels the ball over, gets it again, lovely feet, down he goes. Can Dijon Brown keep his cool? Yes he can! Chance for Mansfield, can they get the shot away? They can, what a save! Outstanding save from Jack Thompson. Oh, here might be the chance. Cruz Allen to seal it, no! Means 
Can Derby seal it here? Chance for Gill! And yes, they can! Derby comfortably through in the end to the second round of the FA Youth Cup. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those from this club whose lives have been given and taken away in the service of their country, who answered the call to serve king and country in two world wars and in conflict six. Today marks Armistice Day. on target from Phillips but beaten away by Wild Smith first time he's been called into action Barkhazen's got around the defenders Barkhazen's cross Collins went down referees had a think and pointed to the penalty spot hat trick on Wednesday night James Collins is in form he has the chance to put Derby in front Season for Derby's number nine. The Rams have the lead. Derby temporarily down to ten, then headed on by Cashin. Can Versailles get there? Craig Versailles, second of the season. Dream start to this second half for Derby. They double their lead. Cashin heads down. The size onto this one again. And it still might be there. It is a double. It's been an eventful season for Hannah Ward. After being named club captain and club ambassador alongside Rory McFarland and Roger Davis at the start of the campaign, she's now reached the impressive milestone of 300 appearances for the U's. Well, congratulations on 300 appearances uh, for the club. Nice little presentation uh, at Pride Park the other day. How does it feel to, to reach that milestone? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, had a lovely day, so really appreciative of the club for, for showing some appreciation in that way. Um, obviously proud of the achievement. I think it's still a little bit surreal. Um, I think as a player, you're just kind of used to having that routine of turning up to training, commitment to games and things like that. So you don't really pay attention to the appearances that you make, but obviously just really pleased. It was this season and obviously early on, depending on uh, what appearances I made for the club. So, um, but yeah, so it was a nice surprise. It must be very different to when you started. Yeah, 100%. I think the biggest word would be professionalism. Um, you look at the setup that we've got here, um, we train at Moor Farm, the, the stadiums that we get to play in now, we get to play in the men's stadiums every now and again, which if you thought about that 10 years ago probably wouldn't happen. Um, the backing that we get, 
is amazing. Um, the academy infrastructure that the girls get to go through now. Um, obviously, I came through the academy and, and centre of excellence, but even that has changed. So it's just amazing the opportunities that, that the girls get to um, have an opportunity to kind of gravitate towards is great. Having failed to beat Crew at the first time of asking, it's back to Pride Park for an FA Cup first round replay. The Rams take an early lead. The League Two side are up for the fight and knock Derby out. Football is a constant thread through their lives. It builds and binds friendships that can last a lifetime. While Derby County against Bristol Rovers isn't the most alluring fixture to some, to one group of friends, and the Derby fan at the heart of it, it cannot be more significant. The Toff Society is Tickhill Overseas Friends of Football Society. There are 10 or 11 of us in the group. Uh, it's our 20th anniversary today. We've been almost everywhere. And today is a really special, um, heartfelt occasion because the co-founder, Barry Hilling, um, is a lifelong Derby fan and we're here to celebrate the, the 20th anniversary in his honour. Me and Patrick, the guy who you spoke to earlier, we founded it and it's built on the back of that to the point where now it can be up to 10, 12 people for each game every year. From a perspective of where we've been, we've been all over Europe and this is our 20th tour, as you can probably see from what's on the back. Um, we have been to quite a few places over many, many years, which is fun because the idea is that once a year, every year, we used to play football together and now what we can't, we can't play as much as we'd like to think we can, we can't. What we try and do now is go away once a year and enjoy the stardom of being on the side of the pitch and everything else with it. It's probably the last year of my life. I've had a, um, a brain hemorrhage and up here I'm now struggling and even down to me le learning difficulties, even now compared to where I was six months ago, my learning difficulties are much more pronounced. Um, so I haven't got long left. So if this is going to be my last trip, and I, it probably will be, then I wanted it to be at my home. And this is my home. Goes without saying, every year we go away together as one group. And to have them come to my last trip here is very special. The under-18s are on the road again in round two of the FA Youth Cup. Manchester United await the winners of Bolton against Derby. Last season, Vale Park was the scene of one of Derby's greatest comebacks of recent memory. This season, it's all about JJ. I 
I dreamt of this last night to be fair. It's just a, a big relief, I think. Been like like you said, I've been been through a hard time since I've been there. I've only played two games, I've been uh, just been injured. But I've been keeping strong and I'm gonna say thank you to the medical team for sticking with me and, and getting me through this this period. So yeah, I'm, I'm just delighted. I don't think it could have been any better, to be honest. Um, first touch, as soon as I come on, but yeah, I'm just, just delighted to be back on the pitch, first and foremost, and hopefully I can keep it up. To be fair, the celebration, one of my friends told me to do that dance, so I said, I, I, I told him I was going to score today. I, I had a feeling, a good feeling. I've been waiting for this moment ever since I've been back training. So yeah, just, just a, a mix of emotions, to be fair, yeah. We always believe in ourselves as a group. Um, these are the these are the games you have got to win. These these tough games on a Tuesday night away, cold. We always got to try and find a way to win any any means necessary. So we've done that, and um, yeah, so we needed much needed three points. It's always really hard, you know, uh, as a six-year-old child, you suddenly get five, six-foot players walk into your room. It's a bit nerve-wracking at times for them, but it's been nice. We've been able to give out things, which, in fairness, the club have given loads of stuff this year, which is nice, and it's just a bit humbling, I think, really. We've all got children who are here today, so, um, you know, it's in a difficult period. It's a bit of sunshine. I spoke to a lovely... Um, family both the kids had the derby kit on uh, all four season ticket holders and they said it was just a real boost knowing that we were coming in they give me questions they had five questions on the wall what i was going to do in the transfer window did i prefer this job to my last one what were my positions i played in and as you well know my answers are quite long so i had a good half an hour then he was starstruck and that was just like after everything we had gone through it was such a positive thing oh, literally it's that one time i'm prepared to say i will not say i hate football <laughs> 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 it's, uh, you know, it's not easy for, for some people in here so uh, we've come down today to try and cheer them up as best we can um you know there's Lots of football fans in general in here, so it's it's great to speak to some people that are mad about football, and obviously there's some big derby fans in here as well. So, like I say, coming down, cheering them up a little bit is um, is always nice. It's been really good to just go around, and see the kids, just put a smile on their face when they're going through this tough time in their life. So yeah, it's been really nice. But you need to keep them positive during this time. So just being able to go in and yeah, give them like a little gift and make them happy. Yeah, it's been really nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Johnston calling possession. Mendes Lang, John Jules lines it up, fires it bottom corner. Another Tuesday night, another goal, and another dance from Tyrese John Jules. And Derby have certainly sealed it now. Tyrese John Jules. <laughs> 
visit to Brisbane Road came all the way back in May 1985, over 38 years ago. The hosts have actually only lost once at home to the Rams in the league competition. First goal is Harahan. Here's Mendez Lang with the chance. to the edge of the area, three Derby players got their first, and the break might be on, the break is on, it's a 2-0, -on it's Mendes Lang and Barkhazen, and it's Barkhazen to score. And there is the final whistle at Brisbane Road. A gusty afternoon down in the capital, ends in victory for Derby. Another good day for the Rams. Fans have been voting with their feet and demonstrating that they want to be able to stand up and watch their favourite football club. Everyone still has a seat and a space allocated to them. There's no change in the capacity of the ground um, and you're, you'll be expected to, to, to sit and find your, your seat when you arrive at ground. Um, but you've got a barrier in front of you that you can hold on to, lean on, stops you from falling forwards onto one around in front of you and it obviously protects you from anybody falling from behind as well. The home fixture with Wickham will see safe standing news at Pride Park for the first time. It's also Derby's final Saturday home game before Christmas. Yeah, I've just asked to quickly uh, pop upstairs and, and welcome you all to Pride Park Stadium uh, this afternoon, in particular welcome to our friends from Wickham, uh, of course. Uh, now, it's not quite our final home game before Christmas, but obviously everybody's getting very excited about it. And uh, there is a special guest here who wanted to come and say hello as well, if our special guest would like to come. <laughs> There is something in there. <laughs> Can you hold that for me, please, Santa? <laughs> so it's going better than I even imagined it was. <laughs> ah. Oh, God! Oh, oh, no. I've, yes. I've given you the wrong present, Roy. Can you believe it? Would you like to show everyone what it is? A sprout. <laughs> Roy, I'm so sorry. I'll find I'll find a correct present. Uh, but in the meantime, we do have some chocolates for everyone to enjoy this afternoon. Oh. Everyone, thank you for indulging me. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cleared away, not too convincingly. One back, the corner. John Jules teeing it up. Now it's Mendes Lang. Driven across goal, not cleared, in it goes! It's Tom Barkhazen! The South Stander on their feet, and Derby finally had the breakthrough, and look what it means. Step forward by the goalkeeper, headed on, chance for Wheeler, caught by Ward, was he? Referee says he was. 
A penalty to Wickham, and it's going to be the final kick of the game. Leheim waits. Now he steps forward and scores. Wickham have snatched the point at Pride Park Stadium. Derby County's disabled supporters club's Christmas meeting has some special guests this year. Fan favourites Jake Buxton and Bradley Johnson have come to tell some tales. Okay, I played with, um, I'm sure you will know it, he's not playing anymore. Um, Wes Hulham, mm. I was with him for four years with Norwich and he was, he played against him. Yeah. He was unbelievable. Yeah. Played against, for me, I would say Paul Scholes. And it was the year, do you remember he came out of retirement for a year? Um, he retired and then didn't come back. Yeah. And I remember I was, must have been 24, 25, and it was that year we played Man United, and I thought, come up against Scholes, he's 36 or something, I said, I'm going to get, get around him and rat, like, rat him. And I could not get near him. He was the best player I played like, on the pitch, I could not get near him. Craig Bryson. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Bryce, we signed Bryce from Kilmarnock. And we signed him, and this scrawny little Scottish like came in. Eight stone, went through. Yeah. Um, yeah. Couldn't trap the ball. We got here, and we saw him out on the pitch running around. Boy, he had an engine, he could run. Could run. Um, such an intelligent player. And then, fortunate enough to play against Alan Shearer uh, when he was at Newcastle. One of his last games, I was young, well at Mansfield. Really good in the air. It's the sort of night every young player dreams of. Old Trafford, under the lights. The FA Youth Cup third round awaits for the under 80s. Yeah, well, Win, lose, draw, perform brilliantly, perform poorly, nothing changes in terms of what the staff, the club think about it. And remember that, they think you're good players, okay, it's been spoken about as a good group with high potential and you're a top, top group of lads. But remember that, because that's not going to change. This is one game, it's 90 minutes, it doesn't change that. So although right now you'll be feeling everything's on it, the reality is, and I'll keep saying it, if I see you in three years' time, two years' time, walk out on Surprise Park, that'll be the biggest buzz for me. Okay, you don't leave anyone out there on their own, everyone stays together. You pick them up, we go again, and we keep momentum. And remember, we know about speed, we know about territory, but there's a feeling that no one can measure in momentum. And that feeling you can control. You can celebrate the small ones. You can pick people up when they're down and you can help people out. And that's what top teams do really well. Like. We impose our game, your individual game, on them. Okay, you do that, you give yourself the best chance of it. Alright, on it goes.
I'd like to obviously uh, welcome the players here who you can pester for your heart's content until they leave. Uh, I'd also like to thank you for their efforts so far this season. There's a bit of fruition coming in the horizon. They're obviously on a, on a good winning run, but they've been training really hard and trying to uh, get us all success. But I'd like to say that I'd like to think everybody in this room is part of uh, Project Promotion. We are desperate to get up this year. And I know a lot of people in this room I don't know personally, and please uh, come up to me, not when I'm in the toilet, but generally any time you like. Uh, but I'd like to thank you for all your efforts. You are the front of the club. Uh, you do speak to uh, fans more than I do face to face, and we really do appreciate all the hard work that all of you do. So I really hope you enjoy uh, your Christmas lunch. Uh, for 80% of the room, I hope you can accept your hangovers tomorrow. But really, thank you very much. I hope you have an amazing Christmas, amazing festivities. Stay happy, healthy, hang out with the people you love, and generally smile. But have a great dinner, and hopefully we'll speak to you all later on. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. You don't get many Thursday night pictures at Pride Park, but Christmas is almost upon us. And Derby play three games over the next nine days. Trips to Wigan and Oxford will end 2023. But first, the final game of the year at Pride Park with Lincoln City, the visitors. Connor Harahan! And the bodies in the box. Harahan. Clever bit of play, this. Oh, and there's a decision for the referee to make here. It's a penalty. Marsmith was beaten on Saturday. He's beaten tonight as well. Set the wrong way. The ball has been taken quickly. Mendes Lang shows it in. And it drops it. And it is Kane Wilson claiming his first Derby County goal. He gets it in front of the South Stand and he gets Derby back in front. Mendes Lang gives it to Wilson. He's beaten up and once. Now spins away from Erahan and he's found Collins. There's no flag. Chance! by James Collins. Derby have that precious two-goal lead. What an impact came Wilson Tanson's coming on at half-time. Nelson's header. Oh, it's been coming. It's been coming. And Curtis Nelson has nodded Derby into a Boxing Day lead at Wigan. Derby leading at Wigan. The home side are growing into this. Forward it goes from Tickle. Nelson battling for it and winning the header. And Curtis Nelson has scored the goal and has brought Derby another Boxing Day victory. They had to really grind this one out in the end. A scintillating first half. Saw Derby dominate. They should have scored more than the one that they managed through Curtis Nelson. And while they couldn't find the second goal, they defended wonderfully well to see this out. The top two have dropped points this Boxing Day, but the Rams win again. They've beaten Wigan by a goal to nil. <laughs>